everybody. Uh, it looks like this is working. I'm just going to wait a few minutes here. Uh, let me adjust the lighting. Uh, I'm supposed to start exactly at 12, so I will hold on and do that. Okay, it is now, or it is now uh, time to start. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Earth Live Lessons. My name is Dr. David Schiffman, and I am a marine biologist who studies sharks. Uh, I am based in Washington, D.C., coming to you live from my uh, self-quarantining apartment here. Uh, but I have, I have worked uh, on sharks and shark ecology and shark biology and shark behavior issues all over the world. Uh, but most recently, I, I did my graduate school work uh, in Charleston, South Carolina. I did, and, and I did my PhD work in Miami, Florida, lots of sharks in both of those places. I just finished up uh, what's called a postdoctoral fellowship, which is something after school, but before you start uh, a full-time professor job. And I was up in Vancouver, Canada for that. And now I'm here in Washington, DC. So the sort of stuff that I work on with sharks is trying to understand uh, shark behavior trying to understand shark uh, biology. What do sharks do? Why do they do it? How do they interact with other animals? And uh, I also do a lot of uh, policy relevant stuff. So I'm trying to work with uh, what are the worth work with elected officials to try to use science to protect animals that are in trouble. So that's the sort of work that I do. I'm also very, very involved in uh, online outreach. And I've been doing that for about a decade now. I write for a science blog called Southern Fried Science. I'm just going to close this too. It looks like there's a glare behind me. Uh, I write for a blog called Southern Fried Science. I have a Twitter account and, and an Instagram account and a Facebook fan page, all at Why Sharks Matter. If you want to learn more about sharks or about the work that I do, I invite you to follow me there. I'm always happy to answer any questions that anyone has about sharks. Uh, if anyone watching uh, is a teacher who is uh, in need of people to speak to their students during these somewhat crazy times, please contact me separately. I would love to Skype in to your class specifically. But again, I work with sharks and we only have about 20 minutes here. So I want to make sure uh, that I get through everything that I wanted to tell you about sharks. I will note that if anyone has any questions, uh, at, about sharks, about me, about marine biology, anything like that, please ask them and I'll, and I'll get to all those questions at the end. Uh, so first of all, what are sharks? Sharks are fish. That's a question that I get a lot. There are some people that think they're marine mammals like dolphins or whales. They're not. There's some people that think they're their own, their own separate thing. They're not. They are fish, uh, just like a goldfish, just like a tuna, just like a bass if you go fishing. Uh, but there's one important difference between sharks and the other sharks, skates, rays, and chimeras are all the shark relatives, and their other or the other groups of fishes. And the main difference is what their skeleton is made out of. I want everyone watching at home to take your arm out in front of you, pick a point about halfway between your wrist and your elbow, and try to bend your arm there. Hopefully you can't. Don't try too hard. Uh, our hospitals are overwhelmed as it is. But hopefully you can't. That's bone. Uh, that is not flexible, and it's what our entire skeletons are made out of. Now, uh, we're supposed to be discouraging people from touching their faces, but if you've washed your hands recently, crinkle your ears. That's flexible. That is cartilage. That is what sharks' entire bodies are made out of. So it's lighter than bone. It's more flexible than bone. It's uh, less dense than bone, which helps uh, with, with the animals who need to move through the water. And it also heals faster than bone. So sharks' entire bodies are made out of cartilage. The same is true of their, the shark relatives, the skates, the rays, and chimeras. Another cool thing that sharks and their relatives have that most other animals don't have is their senses. They have uh, the, same sen the same five senses that we do. They can see, they can smell, they can taste, they can hear, they can touch. But they also have this whole other sense, uh, which is the ability to sense electric fields and magnetic fields in their environment. The big fancy science word for that is called the ampullae of Lorenzini. But it's, an ele it's the ability to sense electric fields. And what that means is uh, they, if there is a prey animal that is hiding under the sand, and you can't see it, and you can't hear it, and you can't smell it, sharks still know it's there because they can just sense the electric field given off it by its body. They can also use these electric fields in order to um, navigate. Uh, the Earth itself has a, mag a strong magnetic field, 
and all sorts of wild animals use the Earth's magnetic field to navigate, and sharks are no exception. Uh, that I, a lot of people, a lot of scientists put these GPS trackers on sharks, so anyone anywhere in the world can follow where the shark is anywhere where, that it goes, which is amazing. Uh, there are a lot of websites and apps that let you do that, and you can pick a favorite shark and get updates anytime it moves anywhere. Uh, but how do the animals know where they're going in the middle of the ocean where there's no street signs, where there's no landmarks of any kind? They're navigating using the Earth's magnetic field, which is a pretty neat thing. Uh, since I'm talking to kids, we have to talk uh, about uh, the baby sharks. Uh, ev everyone knows that baby shark song. Uh, you, you should definitely be singing that to your parents all day long. They'll love that while you're all stuck at home together during this quarantine. Uh, but where baby sharks come from is actually really important to understanding shark uh, conservation. Uh, other species of fishes, like the tunas and, and uh, things like that, they reproduce by what's called spawning. Um, and that means the baby animals develop outside of their mother. And they, that means it takes less energy for the mother, and they can have a ton of babies at a time, though most of them won't survive to adulthood. Sharks and their relatives do something very different. The, the, they, some lay eggs, some give live birth just like mammals do. Some have a weird mix of this that's only found in sharks where uh, the animal hatches with, or the, the animal is uh, growing up inside an egg, but that egg is inside the mother and then hatches and then gives live birth. Sharks are also capable of having what's called uh, uh, the big fancy science word for it is called parthenogenesis, but basic, basically it's self-cloning. A mother who wants to have babies who doesn't have a dad around uh, can just have, just become pregnant and give birth to babies that are exact genetic copies of herself, which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, there are the, the issue with this, where this comes up for conservation issues, is that sharks have relatively few babies at a time, relatively on, relatively infrequently, relatively late in their life. And that means that they cannot recover from fishing pressure very quickly, as quickly as something like a tuna could because of their ability to spawn. Uh, a lot of people think about sharks primarily in the context of sharks being a threat to humans. And sharks are just not a very big threat to humans. Uh, Any time a person is injured or killed, that's of course a big tragedy, and I don't want to minimize that. But uh, this is just a very, very, very unlikely event that gets blown up uh, hysterically sometimes in the media. And people are just terrified of sharks when they really don't need to be. Uh, in a typical year, more people are killed by vending machines than are killed by sharks. More people are killed by flower pots falling on their head from above when they're walking down the street than are killed by sharks. More people are falling off cliffs while they're not paying attention taking selfies than are killed by sharks. So sharks are just not a major threat to you. Uh, there are, if, if you have been in the ocean, there was a shark near you and it knew you were there and it wasn't bothering you. So you really just don't have to worry about sharks that much. Uh, that, but if you're ever in a, in a situation where you, there's a wild animal around you and you don't understand how it's behaving, it's not a bad idea to get out of the way. But there are people who are just absolutely terrified of going in the ocean because sharks are there. The sharks aren't going to bother you um, for, the, for the most part. Sharks are also really, really important for a healthy functioning uh, food chain, a food web, a healthy functioning ocean ecosystem. And the ocean is an ecosystem that tens of millions of humans depend on for food and for jobs and for recreation. So it's really important that we have healthy ocean ecosystems. And basically how this works is predators help keep the food web in balance. I'm from outside of Pittsburgh in Western Pennsylvania, and we used to have wolves there, but we killed all the wolves because wolves are scary and who wants wolves in your backyard? Well, it turns out wolves helped keep deer populations in check. And now the deer populations grow out of control. There's not enough food or space for all of them in the forest. So they come out of the forest and they cause a lot of property damage and they, they uh, spread diseases like Lyme disease. So it's really important to have uh, predators in uh, keeping the food web in balance. 
just scrolling through to make sure there's nothing that I, I'm forgetting here. Uh, I want to talk to you now about some of my favorite species of sharks uh, and some fun facts about them. My absolute favorite species of shark, this is a question that I get a lot, and I want to remind you that if you guys have questions during this live stream, to please ask them uh, and I will uh, answer, I will answer at the end. So my absolute favorite shark is the sandbar shark. Uh, this is a drawing of it that an artist friend of mine did that's on the front of my business cards. I love these animals. And sandbar sharks, if you want to learn more about them, follow hashtag Beth shark on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, but if you've ever been to a shark tank at an aquarium, you've probably seen one. Uh, uh, and that's, in fact, a big part of why they're my favorite shark and why they're the hashtag Beth shark. Uh, a lot of research has shown that people who see sharks at aquariums are less likely to be afraid of sharks and may it may inspire a lifelong love of the ocean and of sharks. And because sandbar sharks are so commonly found in aquariums around the world, uh, they are, uh, for millions of people around the world, that's the first shark they've ever seen, the first shark they see when they're a kid. So they're uh, really important in terms of public outreach. They're also important in terms of scientific research. There's uh, a large sandbar shark population near one of the oldest marine laboratories in the, in the United States. So sandbar sharks are some of the best studied sharks uh, in the ocean because of that. Uh, they're also, they were my masters. Uh, when I did my masters in marine biology, sandbar sharks were my study animal. And that means they're not the first shark I ever saw, but they are the first shark I ever saw a lot of. So they're always going to hold a special place in my heart. Some other cool species of sharks uh, that are around. Uh, and I first I want to note that uh, a lot of people have heard of the, the famous species of sharks, the great white, sometimes the tiger shark or the bull shark or the hammerhead sharks. Uh, but there are, there are, according to the latest uh, guidebook called Sharks of the World that's coming out soon, there are 551 known species of sharks. Uh, with a new species of shark, skate, ray, or chimera discovered by scientists about every two weeks uh, for the last 10 years or so, which is amazing. Uh, there are just, uh, uh, there's so much left to discover in the ocean. And some of these animals are really uh, fascinating weirdos and they don't get enough attention. One of these that I absolutely love are called the river sharks, uh, or sometimes glyphis sharks, G-L-Y-P-H-I-S. These animals can live the, almost their entire lives in fresh water. You often think of sharks as living in the ocean, and most do. Uh, and bull sharks are famous for being able to enter fresh water for short periods of time. But river sharks, the glyphus sharks, can live in fresh water almost their entire lives. And almost no one's heard of them. Unfortunately, they are critically endangered. There are also the thresher sharks. Uh, you may have seen these. If not, uh, parents, it's worth looking up thresher shark tail on YouTube. Uh, there's some crazy videos of these guys. Uh, their tail is longer than the rest of their body combined, and they use it as a whip to stun prey. Uh, they, you, they just sort of arch their back and whip the tail, and it makes a shockwave that stuns little schools of fish that the thresher shark can then uh, go munch on without having to chase down. It's a really amazing adaptation, and until recently, scientists had no idea what that long tail was used for until some scuba divers uh, and researchers observed this happening in the wild and they could hear a whip noise. Uh, and they looked and saw the thresher sharks doing this crazy behavior. There are also basking sharks. I actually have a model of one of these. My wife calls these toys. I call them educational models. But basking sharks are the second largest fish in the ocean. Uh, they are actually found, I, I know uh, Earth, Earth Live Lessons is hosted in the UK. Uh, but there are basking sharks off the UK, but they're also found throughout the North Atlantic and North Pacific. And like they are the second largest fish in the ocean. We're talking they can get this, about the size of a, of a school bus. It's a big fish. Uh, but like other giant fish, like the whale shark, which is more famous, or like the great whales, uh, there are uh, they only eat plankton. They filter feed. So, but. They are really, really impressive animals. Uh, I've never gotten a chance to see one. I was actually at a conference in Scotland a few years ago, and we hired a uh, Basking Shark Scotland, an eco-tour company, to take us out looking for basking sharks, and we didn't see any, even though we were there the whole day. And the next day, they saw like 20. Uh, but we did. that was still an awesome day off the Hebrides. We got to swim with seals. 
uh, we got to swim with giant schools of fish. Uh, but yeah, basking sharks are a really neat animal. Another cool animal that I have an educational model, not a toy of, is the mega mouth shark. These guys have what's, what I think, in my professional opinion, is the coolest scientific name in the whole ocean. Uh, the scientific name is Megacosma pelagios, which means giant mouth of the deep. That's just an awesome scientific name. A lot of scientific names are, are sort of descriptive, but not particularly exciting. That one, uh, that one gets your attention. And these were discovered in the 1970s when a U.S. Navy ship hit one with their anchor. Uh, in, there have only been about 80 of them that have been ever seen by humans, uh, ever. And they have, uh, again, they have that giant mouth, but they, they live in the deep sea where light never reaches. And they have gums, the outer part of their jaw that glows in the dark. And many animals that live in the deep sea have never seen light. So they go to investigate it. And when going to investigate it, they swim right into the mega mouse shark's mouth. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, this is a frilled shark. Uh, these were famous a few years ago when one got this. It's another deep sea animal. You see, it's kind of snake-like. It's long and skinny, and they they uh, they undulate like a snake. One of these swam into a harbor in Japan uh, a, few, a few years ago, and it got a lot of publicity at the time. But they're really weird animals, almost snake-like. Uh, and another one that I really like is the Greenland shark. I don't have a model of them yet. I'm in the market for one. But these animals live under Arctic ice. They're deep, sea, they're deep sea Arctic fish. They're big, 18, 19, 20 feet long uh, would be a good size. It would be a good size one. And they uh, are the longest lived vertebrate animal in the world. They can live to be over 400 years old. They don't reach reproductive maturity until they're 156. That's a long time to be going through puberty. A Greenland shark that was born the day that Canada, as a modern uh, nation, was confederated, would not be an adult yet. A Greenland shark born during the U.S. Civil War has only been an adult for a few years. Uh, they are also the slowest swimming uh, large fish that's ever been measured. Uh, I can't even act it out when I give my public talks because people think I'm exaggerating it when I walk as fast as or as slowly as these guys swim. Uh, they're a really, really cool animal. Uh, what else? So I told you I work on shark conservation and I'll take the last couple of minutes here. I'm not seeing any questions, but if anyone has questions later, please ask me uh, on Twitter, uh, Facebook or Instagram at Why Sharks Matter. But for now, I'll finish talking about shark conservation. So sharks are, are a fascinating and uh, misunderstood group of animals that are important to a healthy functioning ecosystem. But unfortunately, they're also in big trouble. And they're in big trouble because of humans. Humans are killing too many sharks. We're doing this for fishing. Uh, many species of sharks are caught accidentally by fishermen. That's called bycatch. But some are also caught on purpose by people trying to, uh, to, to uh, sell the shark's meat or sell the shark's fins. And there are ways that shark fisheries can be managed sustainably, but a lot of shark fisheries aren't managed sustainably. And sustainably means that a sustainable fishery is one where fishermen are able to take some fish out of the ocean in order to sell for us for dinner, but not they don't take so many that it hurts the population, that it hurts the ecosystem. Um, and that's, uh, there are absolutely sustainable shark fisheries. For those, of the, for those of you in the US, uh, there's a, a great guide that you can either download or get a physical card that you can put in your wallet. Uh, it's made by Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch. Uh, and it is just a list of what seafood in your area is sustainable and what seafood in your area you should maybe avoid if you're trying to eat an environmentally, fr environmentally friendly dinner. Uh, in the, those of you in the UK, the Marine Conservation Society of the UK has a similar guide called the Good Fish Guide. Um, and I, I tell pe people, ask me all the time, uh, what's something that I can do uh, in order to help protect sharks, uh, in order to help protect the ocean. And one of the biggest things that most people can do is to um, eat sustainable seafood and not eat unsustainable seafood. Oh. This is weird. I'm getting. I, I'm. I'm being messaged by Lizzie, who's organizing this. That there are apparently lots of questions coming in, uh, so I will take a few extra minutes to answer these. I just, for some, whatever reason, not seeing them on my end. Sorry, Lizzie. Uh, 
So I'm gonna just I'm I'm reading off my phone so I can make sure to get all the messages. Uh, have I had any dangerous encounters with sharks? No, I haven't. But I tell you what, I did the first time I ever took my dad to tag sharks with me. We had to cut the trip short because I had to be rushed to the emergency room. But it wasn't because of sharks. It was because I got careless around our fishing gear and ended up putting this giant fishing hook through my hand. Yes, I still have it in a medical waste jar on my desk to remind myself not to get cocky. Uh, what, next question. What's the most critically endangered shark? Uh, there are the IUCN Red List, which is an international group of scientific experts, uh, has evaluated a bunch of shark species as critically endangered. Uh, the most critically endangered marine fish in general is a shark relative, the sawfish. Uh, and I have some educational models, not toys, of these here. You can, you can tell why they're called a sawfish. Uh, they are some of the uh, but there are, there are actually lots of species that are critically endangered. Uh, the biggest issue facing sharks, uh, unsustainable overfishing by far. Uh, climate change is a threat to the ocean in general, and it's a threat to many marine species. It's not anywhere near as big a threat to sharks as overfishing is. Plastic pollution in the ocean is a big threat to many marine species, especially marine mammals um, and especially uh, sea turtles. But it's not that big of a threat to sharks. Humans killing too many sharks is the biggest threat facing sharks. And the best thing we can do about that is for you to eat sustainable seafood and not eat unsustainable seafood. Uh, we are just about out of time here. I want to thank everyone uh, for tuning in. And again, this is Earth Lessons Live or Earth Live Lessons. Uh, there are several more of these coming throughout the next week. So uh, follow this YouTube channel. And uh, I want to really th thank everyone for uh, watching. Thank Lizzie for this opportunity. And again, if you need it, if you need anything, I am on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Why Sharks Matter. And I believe this video is going to be archived. If you watched it live and you can't wait to show a friend, uh, it'll be online and available later. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe.